What's up guys, my name is Ace, and welcome back to another gun guide. This is the series where I go into great detail with all of the stats of every one of the weapons in Black Ops Cold War. And in today's episode, we're going to be moving on to the third assault rifle, and this is the Krig-6. Now starting it off, as always, let's have a look at our damage profile, which is 3528, and this means the Krig-6 is going to be a 5-6 to six shot kill in core game modes. Additionally, just like with most of the guns in the game, there are no body multipliers at all, so you're dealing the same amount of damage to the upper torso as you are to their foot. Then when it comes to headshots, this is where the Krieg 6 really shines. We get a 1.4 times multiplier, and this means our headshot damage profile is 4939. And what this means is at any range, all you need is one single headshot mixed in with body shots with the Krieg in order to reduce the number of shots it takes to kill. So up close, if you land three shots to the body and then one to the head, it's now a four-shot kill. And it's great that we have that extra headshot multiplier with this gun, because when we have a look at our rate of fire, this is the slowest firing five-shot kill assault rifle in the game. It is faster than the AK-47, but that kills in four shots to the body. And this means that the Krig-6, when we're just looking at body shots, it actually has the slowest time to kill in the assault rifle category at 368 milliseconds up close. So if you're just aiming for body shots, the Krig is a pretty underwhelming gun. However, as soon as we mix that one single headshot in with our body shots, we can cut our time to kill potential all the way down to 276 milliseconds, which is now faster than any of the other assault rifles in the game. So like I said before, this is where the true power of this gun lies, and you want to make sure you're hitting headshots, otherwise you're better off using something like an XM4. But moving on to bullet velocity, the Krig-6 is among the better assault rifles when it comes to this category at 625 meters per second. I'd still recommend trying to boost this if you have a good opportunity with your attachments, because the more bullet velocity you can have, the better the hit detection is going to feel. Now, getting into our ranges, as you can see here, our 5-shot kill range is amazing at just over 50 meters. And therefore, you generally don't have to worry too much with barrels and stuff to try and boost your range. It's totally fine as is. However, I did want to point out something interesting. This is the 15-inch CMV mil-spec barrel, which is the bottom one that boosts your damage at the cost of a 40% reduction to your range. With this one, even though your range is reduced, your damage is boosted enough that you can now get a 5-shot kill at any range. But then we have our range reduction with our suppressors. Nothing too surprising here. And then finally, just having a quick look for hardcore game modes. Just like with most of the assault rifles, the Krig-6 is a one-shot kill at all ranges in hardcore, as long as you're not shooting through something or as long as the enemy doesn't have armor equipped. As for hipfire, we've got a very standard hipfire for the assault rifle category. No surprises here. And when it comes to idle sway, it's fairly standard for the assault rifle category. I do believe it has a bit more idle sway than the XM4, for instance but it's generally not something you have to worry too much about with this gun. And now let's get into recoil. Now, the Krieg-6 doesn't really have too much recoil. None of the assault rifles really do, aside from the FFAR currently. But there's something interesting that happens with the Krieg-6. For the first 10 shots or so, you get a really nice tight grouping with just a little bit of vertical recoil, but then there's a big jump until you get to your second grouping with the Krieg-6. So the way this gun works is if you're on point with your initial shots, you should have no problem at all, because you'll be killing your enemy well before you get that jump and recoil. However, if you are a little bit sloppy with your aim, that jump and recoil may end up throwing you off target before you end up getting the kill. But after that, let's move into our handling stats. Our aim down sight time is standard for assault rifles at 300 milliseconds, and our sprint out time is also pretty standard. Our experience sprint out time is 266 milliseconds. As for our reload add time, this is actually the slowest in the assault rifle category at 1.87 seconds. So this is definitely one of the downsides of this gun, and you may want to consider using a magazine attachment to either reduce your reload time or just increase your magazine capacity so that you don't have to reload as often. But then let's get into our movement speeds, and everything is standard here for assault rifles. There's no surprises whatsoever. We've got a standard 95% movement speed, and then everything else is normal as well. And that about wraps it up for the basic stats of this gun. Now let's get into some of the strengths and weaknesses. The strengths of the Krig-6 are first up, headshots. Headshots are really the key to this gun's power. Just one headshot mixed in with body shots is all you need, which is amazing. Also, I do consider this to be quite an accurate gun, even though it has that jump after the first 10 shots. It's still very accurate within those 10 shots, and even with that jump, it's not too bad. You can still generally stay on target just fine. And then finally for strengths, our range value. Our standard range value at 50 meters, this is well beyond most line of sights you'll be using in the regular 6v6 maps, which is just great. And now let's move on to the weaknesses. And the first one is the fact that it has that slowest rate of fire out of all of the five shot kill assault rifles, and therefore the slowest base time to kill if you aren't getting headshots. 
And I feel like that's really going to hold this back for a lot of people that don't aim for the head. Additionally, like I shared earlier, we do have the slowest reload ad time in the assault rifle category, and that's another thing to consider when building your class setups. And before we get into some of my recommended class setups, I did briefly want to circle back to that 15 inch barrel, the mil spec barrel that actually boosts your damage. With this one, like I shared earlier, it turns this into a five shot kill at long ranges as well. However, it's not really helping you up close unless you are able to get three headshots in a row, in which case you can now get a three shot kill, which would then give you one of the fastest time to kill values out of any of the full auto guns in the entire game at 184 milliseconds. That is insanely fast in Cold War, but not really all that practical. And therefore I would say generally just stay away from this barrel. And with that, it's now time to move into a couple great attachment combinations and example class setups that I like to use. And with the first one, I really like my stealth builds with assault rifles, so that's what this one's gonna be. And also, a big thing with the Krig is I'm not a huge fan of the iron sights. So with this, I am gonna be using the Microflex LED sight, just because that's my favorite when it comes to low zoom optics. Then we're using the standard suppressor, the 19.7 inch Ranger barrel, mainly for that boost to our bullet velocity, so this thing's gonna feel like it's a hit scan because of this. Then for our magazine attachment, I got the jungle style mag just because this improves our reload time quite considerably. It really cuts it down and now it's going to be much more in line with the other assault rifles or actually a little bit faster than the other assault rifles. And then finally we have the airborne elastic wrap, which is just an amazing attachment for assault rifles that I'd recommend on basically any assault rifle class setup. And with these attachments, we get a slight reduction to our damage range, which isn't that big of an issue. We still have a great damage range at 43 meters. Our bullet velocity is awesome, our reload time, like I said, is quite fast. Sprint out time suffers a little bit, but this isn't the type of gun you should be sprinting around like a madman with anyway, so that's not a huge issue. However, our aim down sight time is quite snappy at 210 milliseconds. And taking this into an example class setup, we've got the Gallo shotgun as our secondary, a Stimshot, Semtex, Jammer, then we're using Perk Greed, which I really like using on most of my class setups, and with this we've got Flak Jacket and Tack Mask, Assassin and Scavenger, and then finally the obvious two, Ninja and Ghost. This right here is a great setup for methodically moving around the map in a stealthy way, getting on the enemy's flank. I wouldn't rush too heavily with this, it's more so just carefully pushing around the map and staying off the radar while doing so. As for the next class setup, this is using the Gunfighter wildcard, so we're really loading up on attachments with this one. And once again, I've got that Microflex LED just because I really like that optic. We also have a muzzle brake on this, so we are going loud, and that's going to help with that vertical recoil control. And also, when you combine this with that field agent grip, look at the recoil on this, or lack thereof. There is basically no recoil with this gun. It is extremely accurate. But on top of this, we once again have that 19.7 inch Ranger barrel. We've got the target designator, 40 round speed mag on this, so we get really quick reloads, as well as a larger magazine capacity. Then we've got the tactical stock so we can strafe side to side a little bit better. And finally, we have that airborne elastic wrap, which, like I said, it's just a great attachment to use on anything. This setup right here is just an amazing sort of all-arounder. You can do pretty much anything with this gun. You can challenge people at extremely long ranges. You can practically counter snipe with this setup if you wanted to. Or if you want to, you can use it up close and personal just fine as well. Again, the only real downside to this that you have to be aware of is your sprint out time. That might be holding you back sometimes with this gun but that just requires a bit of an adjustment to your playstyle. Aside from that, this setup is awesome. And let's take this one into an example class setup, and with this, once again, I've just got that Gallo shotgun as a secondary. You can really use whatever you want. Then we've got a stun grenade, a Molotov, the assault pack for our field upgrade, flak jacket, assassin, and then finally ninja. Like I said, this is just a good all-around sort of class setup. You can go anywhere, do anything with this setup, and you should be just fine. And with that, that's gonna wrap it up for today's gun guide on the Krig 6. Personally, I think this is a really good gun as long as you're aware of the fact that you have to be hitting those headshots if you want to get an exceptional time to kill. If you're not hitting those headshots, then you've basically got a below average assault rifle in your hand. Of course, that is just my opinion though. I'd like to know in the comment section below, what do you guys think about the Krig 6 in Cold War? Do you love it? Do you hate it? Are you somewhere in between? Just let me know those thoughts down below. Now, if you guys have missed any of the previous episodes of Gun Guides, I will leave a link down below. I've only covered a couple guns so far. I know it's been a little bit slow going with this series lately. And this is just because in the background at the moment, I'm really putting a lot of focus on a huge skill-based matchmaking study. And that has taken up all of my spare time in the background. Gun Guides will start rolling out faster than this once I get that study complete. But that's about it. If you enjoyed the video, a like rating is always appreciated. And don't forget to subscribe for more if you haven't already. I'll talk to you guys next time.